At Snoring Spine Center, I have a special interest in artificial disc replacement, both in the lumbar and cervical spine. This technology combines what we know in total joint replacement for knees and hips with the same types of materials and translating them, them into the cervical and lumbar spine to help preserve the natural motions of the spine. When we look at the normal disc in most patients, you have a gel pad that's between two vertebrae that works as a shock absorber, but also preserves motion or continues motion in both a flexion and extension position with the abdomen being in the front and the spinous processes, these hard parts that we can feel in the middle of our back uh, posteriorly. Additionally, it has to be firm enough to prevent any injury to the nerve root coming out through this little tunnel here called the foramen and also in the spinal canal behind the disc. These sometimes can start, the degeneration to these discs can start with a disc herniation or an injury that may be small to begin with, but over time escalate to causing severe intractable pain on a daily basis. With an artificial disc replacement, what we see is that we take out the cushion in between and replace it with a metal on plastic spacer that ingrows into the bone, both in the vertebral body above and below. This allows preservation of the spacing for where the, the nerve root comes out behind the disc and also in the spinal canal behind here. This allows continued motion, both in flexion extension, lateral bending, and also even some rotation overall. When evaluating the patient for a disc replacement, we typically look at a number of different criteria both your history, your physical, and some of your imaging, including an MRI, your regular plane films, both standing and potentially with you bending forward and extending your back or leaning back towards the sky. These are important things to look at in regards to the way that the disc is functioning overall in your general life, and also what it is doing to the nerves posteriorly. Some patients who do have degeneration to the disc at one of the levels in their lumbar spine it doesn't always correlate with being a candidate for disc replacement. This is something that we would have to sit down and discuss the pros and the cons in regards to treatment with an artificial disc replacement. But when you look at the ultimate outcomes, we find that there is significant improvement in patient's pain, and if they have a leg or arm pain syndrome, this typically is relieved also, equal to, or in some cases, potentially even better than some of the fusion procedures that we offer our patients currently. At Sonoran Spine Center, when we evaluate a patient for a disc replacement technology such as this, we really want to go back through the history and make sure that you've really treated this with every aggressive non-operative treatment you can try. If you failed everything, this is a potential last ditch resort for trying to treat your spinal condition and the pain that most patients experience both in the neck and the back.